Brooke is getting ready to release their new Nintendo Switch controller, the Vivid controller. Now, I'm a big fan of Brooke. I've used their controller adapters for retro consoles, newer consoles, for arcade sticks, the classic mini consoles, and I've used their arcade stick boards as well. I don't think I've ever used an actual controller made by them, though. Do they even have controllers that they make? I did do a quick search before I recorded this video, and I don't see any, so maybe this is their first. Now, they did send this to me for purpose of review many months ago, and due to delays in distribution, they asked me if I could hold off for a little bit, so I kind of forgot about it, but here we are. Is this thing the real deal? Now it's time, with it coming out pretty soon, to take a quick look. Now, just being straight, I'm not too much a fan of third-party controllers for consoles. I typically use whatever the company made themselves and designed for their system, and that's what I get used to, other than Joy-Cons, but that's a whole other story. Really don't like those controllers. Now, there has been a third-party company or two that has broken that rule for me and put out some awesome stuff, and will Brooke be a part of that? You know what I'm saying? Are, are they going to have me defaulting to their Vivid controller instead of my Pro controller? So you may find this controller interesting with its additional functionality that's not found in too many other controllers out there. Now, for me, I'm sure it will get some use, but is it gonna be my go-to or delegated to player two? I mean, if the controller is worth a damn, it may give player two the edge with those extra buttons. So let's go ahead and get into it. The basics. So this is a Bluetooth controller that can be used on many other devices like Android and whatnot but we are focusing on Nintendo Switch. That's like the main thing that this is advertised for. So it has a built-in 650 milliamp hour battery that can last about 10 hours of gameplay. The controller did come with a phone mount and USB-C charge cable. It also has two back buttons that function as either a macro button that can store up to 25 button presses over a 30 second input period, or as a precision analog stick mode where you can half the sensitivity of either the left or right stick. This is called shoot mode. Now you also have turbo functions that can be adjusted. Uh, the controller has a A, B, X, Y face button swap mode. So basically you could swap the position of the A and B, the X and Y. And also the home button does wake up the Nintendo Switch. And it has motion sensing and vibration motors that can be adjusted as well. One thing to note, no NFT reader in this controller. So no scanning amiibos. Now, after having used this controller for a while, I can say it does the job it was meant to do mostly well, beside one thing that may be a deal breaker for a lot of people. And we'll get into that in a moment. So the analog sticks, they feel great. They have a nice resistance to them and the precision mode does come in handy at times. And then the macros, they also function well. You can only record two sets of macros, but it does take inputs from the analog sticks the D-pad and face buttons, so that's good. Most controllers that I've used in the past that have like a macro setup wouldn't work with the analog sticks as input, so nice feature. The turbo function also works nicely and allows you to quickly set turbo to specific buttons and change the frequency three levels, five, 10, or 15 presses per second. Now, you also may have noticed that there are lights on the controller near the Brook logo. Kind of pointless to me, but they can be changed to a few different colors or cycling through the colors or can just be completely turned off. So the face buttons and shoulder buttons all have a good feel to them and register without issue. I do have one nitpick though. This isn't my main issue with the controller, it's just a nitpick. And that's with the shoulder buttons. That the, I kind of wish the L and the R sat up a little higher. I don't like how pushing them pushes slightly past the housing of the controller. The Pro Controller, the official Pro Controller, doesn't do this, so it was something I noticed with my index fingers touching the top of the controller when pressing those buttons. But yeah, just something worth pointing out. Kinda noticed it immediately for me. Now, I almost forgot about the motion controls. So this controller does have a, a six-axis uh, gyro sensor, and from my testing, it feels accurate, so no real complaints there. So the controller, it, it's not as heavy as a standard Pro Controller, it's still fairly comfortable and doesn't feel overly cheap to me, but it also doesn't feel exactly premium either, if that makes any sense. For the price, I, I can't really complain about that though. I mean, it is half the cost of a Pro Controller, but there is one thing I feel I can complain about. 
So the official Pro Controller, it's known to have issues with its D-pad. And I was really hoping this Brook Controller would do a better job. And it almost does. I mean, it has no issues registering up, down, left, and right. And doesn't register incorrect presses at all when having to rush through those basic directions back and forth. But diagonals. Holy crap. I was having such a difficult time with diagonals and just rolling motions, like going from down to forward. This controller horribly failed the Hadouken test for me. I mean, I could do dragon punches fairly easily, but those down forward and down back moves are just not working. And then the up forward and up back, jumping forward and back in a fighting game, also made me want to throw this controller at a wall. Running in contra and shooting diagonally wasn't really working either. Such a disappointment. I mean, if you're playing games with a D-pad that doesn't really need that kind of control, this may be fine, but I, I cannot give a must-buy rating to something that, for me, fails at anything. It's all or nothing for me. I mean, not really, like, as far as quality and price, like, there could be some compromises, but everything has to function well. And I feel like if this controller's D-pad was on point, this would be a must-have controller in my opinion. But as it stands, I'm just having a hard time recommending it. And I hate having to, you know, have a negative thing to say about a product from a company that I've never had anything bad to say about, but that's just the reality of things for me. I have to be honest and share my actual experience, not just a, hey, buy this thing with hopes that, you know, the company will continue to send me review products. But, you know, Brooke has always been good about taking customer and user feedback and fixing issues. So maybe this is something they could look into. Maybe this is just an issue with the controller I received. I mean, I have had it since the beginning of this year. So I don't know, it could be a problem just delegated to the one I got, but I, I have my doubts with that. I feel like this is just a, a design issue with the controller overall. That's, that's really unfortunate. You know, if I do hear anything concerning this issue, I'll put a pinned comment with an update. But yeah, I was really hopeful for this. Uh, it's a decent looking controller. It feels good. It's just that that D-pad, man. The D-pad just, yeah, with those diagonals, I, I can't I can't deal with it. Everything else about the controller, I'm pretty positive about, pretty positive about. Um, it should be available soon if you do want to, you know, check it out. Maybe you'll be fine with it. Um, I'm sure it'll be up on Amazon. I know it's on Stone Age Gamer. Uh, right now as far as like signing up to be notified so i'll put some links down below if you're interested but yeah just a little unfortunate have to be honest with you guys this one's a pass for me thanks for watching bye